Now he's, okay. Weird lighting today because I gotta take this thing out and move it, which is great that I put this thing on wheels. So we're gonna be moving in a new compressor. So let me show you what we're gonna be bringing. So Audioscape sent me this G-style compressor, an SSLG essentially. Um, not a review coming quite yet, but we're gonna at least get acquainted. Let's go. <sighs> All right, I need to get a... So I love this desk and I've had this set up now for a little while. The things that I appreciate are that I can literally move my standing desk out of the way. I can butt it up against this window and then have line of sight for anything that happens in the studio. And if I want to, I can put it to the side and just listen and stand here and twist knobs and be right here, basically in the sweet spot. So I think what I'm gonna do, move this guy down. Man, this would be so much easier. With an LTT screwdriver. And I suppose while we're here, we can talk about the different reasons to have certain things in the rack to begin with. I've talked about my gear a little bit and the gear is one of those things that's so personal. Why you have it, why you use it, and you get to know your gear to a certain point. It's so much of it is preference. And I think some of the things that are drawbacks with gear reviews are that people will phrase something like it's the ultimate compressor. And there's a certain point of like, you gotta play the game with the algorithm and the clickbaity titles and, and stuff like that. And which I've definitely done my fair share of as I experiment and navigate this YouTube thing. Um, but as a studio owner and, a, and an engineer, there is no best, it doesn't exist. There's different flavors. There's different things that might work with your workflow. Different things will like different input and output impedances, levels, how hard you're hitting them. And so somebody might have a vastly different experience on say the ELOP. I got the chance to talk to uh, somebody from Manly while I was at GearFest this past week. And I was asking them about the new ELOP, the ELOP Plus, and that I have an old one. And why do I like the old one so much more? And I assumed it was because of the output transformers and I was completely right. If you were to look at an old ELOP versus a new one, they're completely different flavors. They're doing close to the similar thing, but the reason that I like this and the reason that I use it isn't because of the compressor, is like amazing. The reason I love it is because you can slam the output and the output transformers on this thing break up in a way that is just so tasty. It's really hard to make it clip your converter after the fact, it's gonna clip all inside that box, which is really cool with guitars. So many different pieces of gear in this rack kind of do something like that. You would only know if you used it a thousand times and used it wrong and used it right. And through the process of elimination, you kind of figured out what you like and how to use it. I know I love to obliterate guitars through the ELOP, not necessarily from a gain reduction standpoint, but from just pushing it into that output transformer. It breaks up so well. So much of this is workflow and how you like to do things. And you may not know how you want to do it. Man, that looks good. Oh, I cannot wait to play with this thing. So one of the things I get asked a lot is, so if I was gonna order my first compressor, what should I get? And that's a really tough question because there's a lot that comes into play, let alone what are your preferences? What kind of compression do you like? But what are you working on? Are you mainly a metal guy? Do you do country? Are you working in the classical world? Like there, there's so many parts to that question that are almost impossible for somebody to answer. The blanket statement that I've kind of come up with, if you have no outboard and maybe you're doing some tracking, maybe you're doing a little bit of mixing and you can go out of the box as well as in the box. What's that first compressor that you're you're gonna wanna reach for. And I think I've come up with an answer for that. <sighs> Cause what if there was a compressor that was maybe not perfect at any one thing. It kind of does 10 things really, really well. Like you're not gonna complain that it's not spot on accurate to what it's putting itself up against, but you don't care because it's just so usable of a unit. And not only that, it's fast, it's easy to use and has a ton of different options, but it's fast to navigate. You can get through things pretty quickly and you have to because it can do so many different things, so many different sounds. It can be clean, it can be dirty. Whereas something like this, the Audioscape unit, which I'm stoked to try because I love this style of compression. And I cannot wait to see what it does on my drum bus and my master bus and a few other things. But this other compressor is definitely different. 
I think for me, that compressor is the distressor. It <laughs> is hands down the compressor that I use the most, barring maybe the MBP, because that is literally on for tracking, mixing, mastering, it stays on my two bus. That is the compressor that I use literally the most. But as far as getting in and tweaking things and on a single channel basis, that's not like a mix bus situation, it's easily the distressor. What I do find about this thing is it's it's not the compressor that is overly sexy. It's not like an LA-2A. It's not like an 1176. On the contrary, it's like both of those things. And let me explain. <laughs> You can switch this thing to opto mode and basically have an LA-2A. You can switch it to four to one, medium attack, fast release, change the detector to cut the low end, give yourself a mid bump and add distortion circuit two and you have an 1176. Is it exactly what an old Yuri 1176 sounds like? No, but it is so useful and it works every single time. I've had this for a long time, it's never broken. I can't say that about all the 1176s that I've ever had or all of the LA-2As for that matter. <laughs> Compressors are very much like a how do you work type of thing and in what you're trying to get out of them. Are you really a gain reduction guy and you're looking for control? Are you a tonal guy and you're looking for what that compressor is gonna impart on the source from like a character standpoint? The thing about the distressor is it can be both of those things at the same time. And what I find in going to other spaces and one space in particular where they're asking me how I want it set up, because I'm gonna be working out of this space a lot in the future. Jeremy, what do you want in here? What's something that we can get to make the job easier? And I literally said, we need six more distressors. <laughs> A lot of vocals happening live. It's basically a live broadcast. And I asked for distressors. I didn't ask for 1176s. I didn't ask for LA-2A. They have both of those things already in there. They have distressors in there. They have Shadow Hills mastering comps in there. But what I want are distressors because they're so easy to use. And if a volunteer goes in, I can quickly tell somebody what to look for on a distressor and that it's gonna open up at a certain point. They're so ubiquitous and so predictable that they're easy to do. This is not a sponsored video. I have no relationship with Empirical Labs to be clear about it. <laughs> Sweetwater is not sponsoring this video, but I do have an affiliate link in the description below that helps support the channel immensely. If you're looking for a distressor, if you wanna pick that up or you wanna pick up any piece of gear, a pack of string, a pick, a set of headphones, anything, click one of my links first. It helps so much for the channel, seriously. And what I can say, having been at Sweetwater for the past weekend, getting to hang out with a lot of the people down there, the things that they're doing are genuinely cool. And you guys, the customer, are at the forefront of all of that thought. Getting to talk to the employees there and how excited they are to work with people and get the right thing for what that person needs is a really refreshing experience that it's not like a cutthroat environment where everybody's just trying to shove product down somebody's throat. There's a really cool community there. And the community is made up of people who like to make music, who have made music their whole life, who continue to make music. And it's their passion to get you exactly the thing that's right for you in a certain situation. And maybe it's a distressor. Just saying. Ooh. Oh, dad noises. Oh, the truth. <laughs> Can't wait to try this thing out. So why would I go through this whole thing, install an Audioscape G-style compressor, and talk about a distressor the whole time? I don't know this thing yet. I haven't tried this. I haven't heard it on anything. I'm stoked to try it. I'm stoked to hear it. Reviews coming on this soon. At the heart of it, these things are fundamentally different. And so much of this is personal. If you're mainly a mixer and you're just looking for something to slap on the two bus, the G-Style comp is probably exactly what you're looking for. If you're somebody doing a whole lot of different stuff and you need a vocal comp, as well as a mixing comp, as well as something you can put on a vocal, a snare drum, a guitar, and just have it work and be 30 different things. A distressor is hard to beat for something like that. Stay tuned for a review on the Audioscape. I'm gonna get to know it for a little while. I'm gonna put it through its paces, but definitely expect a review of this thing coming in the near future. Subscribe for that. If you're interested in the stressor or anything else, please hit the affiliate link in the description below. It helps the channel more than you know. This video is not sponsored by anybody. I don't have any relationship with Empirical Labs, like I said, but I wouldn't mind uh, getting to talk because Dave Durr is a genius. As always, if you guys liked it, hit the like button, subscribe for more like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Well, that didn't work.
Wow. That's nuts. That's pretty crazy. 